Hello, my name is Nicholas Sim, and I'm a third year undergraduate studying material science at Corpus Christi College in Oxford. I'm doing material science, and it's basically just the study of how the structure and properties of the three main types of materials used, which are ceramics, metals, and polymers, and how they, the structure influences the properties of materials, and how they change their mechanical properties, uh, how they break, how they interact with other types of matter, how they interact with, uh, with light and electricity, magnetism and all that. So basically I did a PAT for material science, which is the physics aptitude test, and I prepped for it by uh, mostly looking for past papers online. You can search PAT Oxford past papers. There should be multiple websites that have uploaded the PAT past year questions and you can do them. Also, if you're doing uh, pre-U physics, like uh, A-levels or IB physics, you can also revise using that. But this, please note that the syllabus may not be the same as PAT. So do look through the past year papers. I applied for Trinity College doing material science. And when I got my interview, it was a group of two colleges, actually. Because I did my interview over Skype, so I did my interviews in one shot. Two interviewers, one from Trinity College and uh, St. Edmunds Hall, which is uh, Teddy Hall for short, was sitting in the background listening in. So I got interviewed by the Trinity College tutors and they gave me only three questions to answer, which was uh, more maths and physics based questions. Uh, they asked you to derive simple equations and graphs, as well as uh, test you on like some basic physics. And that was it really, it was a really short interview. However, I felt that I didn't really do that well. But I think that'll be the case for most people. Everyone will say that they didn't do well and they'll feel like they tripped up. But that's, that's always the case for every interview ever. I gave it a shot regardless of what I thought would happen. Because even though you may think that you're not good enough for Oxford, who knows, you may end up like me and just, you know, you, you probably underestimate yourself a lot. So you should really definitely give it a try. And applying for Oxford is, doesn't mean you waste the space. It just gives you more of an opportunity to just take, take that leap of faith and apply to Oxbridge. I would say tutorials are a group uh, consolidation sessions after you have lectures. So the main uh, confusion people in students have in Oxford are differences between lectures, classes, and tutorials. Lectures are what in Malaysia you call class. If you say I want to go class, I skip class. The same thing applies to lectures here. It is basically hours or one, one hour, two hour blocks <laughs> where you sit in lecture theatre and listen to your lecturer talk about his topic for an hour. Now they take notes, you either fall asleep or you just stay awake through it and that's that's what we call classes in Malaysia. Classes here are, I would say, large group uh, like sessions that where you hand in work beforehand. So you have a problem sheet or an essay and you hand it into the lecturer and then after that the classes have a pre-scheduled date where you attend and after that they go through the, pro the problem sheet or essay. I don't know whether they have classes for essays but in material science case they do have classes for problem sheets and then you attend these classes. They are larger in size, I would say up, 10, up to 20 people max and the lecturers will talk through the problem sheets. You get to ask them questions about where you had the problems, where you encountered any uh, issues in your work. And yeah, so tutorials, I would say, are like classes but on a smaller level. So with two to three students maximum in your tutorials, I would say it's a very focused group uh, consolidation session with your tutor who you've handed in work to pre uh, beforehand. And he'll go through the problem sheet during the tutorial and you will have to uh, let him know if, let he or her know if you had any problems with it beforehand. And I find them a quite useful because it's very focused and you get to, you get a lot of uh, uh, time with the tutor and your tutor mates as well. That's one of the advantages, yeah, I would say, very focused learning out of you. And also, you do not get drowned out, as in, maybe if you're a bit shy of asking a question in front of 20 people, I would say you would be slightly more comfortable asking in front of one or two of your friends or one or two of your course mates. And I feel that a learning in a very focused environment is 
more beneficial for me, but obviously it may vary for some other people. Disadvantages, if you get called out and you don't know what you're talking about, you will sound very foolish. And it's very easy to get called out because there's only you know, 1 out of 3 instead of 1 out of 20. A lot of people think that off students are like some kind of robots that study all day 24-7 and don't go out and don't leave their room and don't do anything else apart from study. That's the stereotype I have heard before. Or some people may have heard, but it's actually quite far from the truth. Uh, you don't get an Oxford for being a uh, purely academic student that only knows how to study and regurgitate notes and textbooks. You have to have good time management and be able to uh, balance between study, studying uh, your own personal time, you know, social life as well. I personally find it quite manageable, although it was slightly difficult at the start. Because you are more independent here at the university, you don't have anyone to tell you uh, what to do. So it's difficult at first for people who are not usually like that. But uh, work-life balance is generally more, quite manageable. Everyone has, has to do it at some point, so you will be forced to learn how to do it. So I'm involved in, obviously, the Malaysian Society, OUMC. I do attend events, celebration events, Chinese New Year, Deepavali celebrations, welcome back teas as well. I am also involved in the university, Oxford University Ultimate Club, or OUUC, or OW for short. That is basically frisbee, so I play frisbee for the university, and that's what I do in my free time. The Malaysian Society in Oxford is a bit small, due to the small number of Malaysians who do apply here and do get accepted. But I feel like it's still very tight-knit. I feel like pretty much everyone knows everyone in the idea or year above and below, which is great. There are so many dumb traditions that still exist, but I find it quite funny. So for exams, you will need to wear something called a subfask, which is, uh, I, would only, I can only describe it as a very ugly costume that you need to wear to exams. You need to wear it over your coat, so it involves a mortar board, and you need to wear a gown. Not a full-on dress, but it's something like that drapes over your shoulders into the exams, and you cannot take exams without uh, and not wear them. You must wear them in exams. There's also punting, where you push a boat along the river with a stick that pushes off the river bit, and is the most inefficient method of water travel probably invented by men. There is also trashing. Trashing is what happens when at the end of the exams for that year, let's say first or third, your final year exams, your friends will gather up outside the exam schools, which is where you take your exams, and throw confetti, whipped cream, uh, maybe pour like some champagne on you or something like that. It's a common uh, way of like celebrating the end of your like, final year exams or first year exams, and people top it off by jumping the river with all that trash on them. So when you are a first, uh, first year, you get uh, put in a college family, so you have college father and mom, who may not, you may even have a college mom and mom or college dad and dad, you know, it's 2020, you know, keep up with the times. Uh, yeah, they are basically seniors one year above you who are responsible of like keeping in touch with you, making sure that you are settling into your life at college. And you may even have a college sibling if you're lucky, which is basically someone in the same year as you who may not be the, uh, who may not be the same course as you, as you, but you are in their college family. And, you know, the college friends are responsible of like making sure you and your college sibling are doing settling in all right. If there's anyone to talk to, any problems with academic life or social, your social life at Oxford, you can always talk to them. They're meant to be like, you know, your family away from home. It's a great system, I think. It's weird, but I think it's really, really good. There's also the OUMC family, which is basically the college family, but for OUMC. And that is also great because you always want a familiar face in somewhere you've never been to before. So I like going to the Gloucester Green Market located in the Gloucester Green bus station. It's about a 10 minute walk from the city centre. There are a lot of food stalls here and there. And like the like, variety is good. There's always like good variety of Asian, European, American, South American food there. And the price is average to above average, but the food is very reason very good. I think there's only one Malaysian restaurant in Oxford, and that's called Zeng's. It is up in Jericho, about 15 minutes north of the city centre. But the food is pretty good, pretty on point, but price is a bit high. Uh, OUMC usually has tradition of organising the Chinese New Year dinners at Zeng's. 
for a subsidized price for OEMC members. So do check it out. It's really great. This is where it gets a bit confusing. So some colleges have two types of formals apparently. A uh, regular formal and a formal formal. Okay, I'm just going to explain it for corpus because I don't know how it's like elsewhere. But in corpus, formals are once a week on Friday nights where you dress up in a shirt, which is a long sleeve, maybe even a, uh, and a coat as well. It's like a formal event. And you go to the hall and eat dinner, a three-course or four-course meal prepared by the college. And it's usually a bit more atas than your regular dinners at college. The prices can range from £8 to £13, maybe even £20 for a really, really good formal. Prices and timings and the frequency may vary between colleges. But yeah, they are very, I would say the first, freshest formal is always the best because they want to put on a good impression and after that, you know, just don't care anymore. So it's always great, a great first experience. Freshest formals are when you have formals in your first year cohort with your tutors and your course mates. And you get to just meet everyone and it's really, really great. You get, uh, you get like a pre-drinks as well with your tutors, you talk to them and you meet basically everyone for the first time. I have been to an Oxford Union event and I have seen uh, Sir Ian McCallan, aka Gandalf, aka Magneto in front of me and it was really really nice. Oh, uh, our dear previous Prime Minister twice, Dr Mate, uh, at Oxford Union giving a talk as well. And I've also seen the previous Governor of Hong Kong. It's very very easy to go to talks with uh, a very well-known person in the Oxford Union because that's the whole point of the Oxford Union apart from debating. I would say, yes, it's a one-of-a-kind experience that only, you know, if you get in, you will be able to say that oh, I've been to Oxford. And it will be probably the most memorable three or four years of your life. You'll make amazing friends, you experience things you probably won't be able to. Will you experience things in Oxford that you wouldn't experience in other universities? Yes and no. Like, other universities may not have that amazing architecture, but you may also not have that campus lifestyle in Oxford as well, so it's a trade-off. So really do your research into how Oxford is like. Just, you know, decide based on your gut feeling whether you think it's really for you. But I would say just go for it because Oxford is really something special.